season's coming up, people say, you know what? What do I give people that already have everything that they want? They can afford to buy anything. How do you make an impression? How do you make a lasting introduction? Say, you know what? People want to carve out some time with you. Well, I'm here with John Rulin of Giftology, and here in this segment, this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, we're going to talk about how to give gifts to people that are already millionaires coming up right now. So we are smoking today a Hoffman made by Monte Cristo for the E1 Reese Cigar Lounge here in Chicago. What's cracking everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here at the E1 Reese Cigar Lounge here in downtown Chicago. We're looking at the L train going on right now I'm here with John Rulin. What's going on brother? I'm glad you're here. Hey, right? great to be here. You're about to go see the Cubs, you're about to go see the Bears, and you made a side stop to come see me. Absolutely. I, appreci I appreciate that bro. Yeah, of course. 100%. So, listen, you guys made an impression on me by sending me a set of steak knives. Talking about, I'm gonna carve out some time with you guys to integrate gift giving into your marketing strategy. And our CEO, Patrick and David, has always done a phenomenal job of giving gifts, thoughtful gifts, to his people like myself and many other of our guys across the country. And we, so we, we just started to learn how to, uh, uh, learn how to give gifts. Cause, John, I come from a, a background, man. We didn't have much, man. So, like, giving gifts was like the last thing. I'm like, we couldn't give, we couldn't even give ourselves a gift. Yeah, let alone somebody else. Let alone somebody else. Let alone make it nice. <laughs> right. And so I was, I was uh, cooking some seared tuna uh, yeah, the other day, and I said, you know what? I need a sharp knife, and I grabbed your knife. Of course. And top of mind. The top of mind. The person who's most top of mind in business gets yeah. the referrals, gets the deals, gets the phone call back. Hundred yeah. percent. So let's let's jump right into it. Yeah. So why should I integrate a gift giving into my marketing strategy, let alone from a personal standpoint? Because I know holidays are coming up and, yeah. and people want to give gifts to people on the holidays. Yeah. So why should I incorporate gift giving? Well, the ironic part is everybody gets really generous around the holidays. Yeah. And what's ironic is I won't allow my clients when they hire our agency to do all their gifting, I won't let them do gifts between November and December. People are like, You're a gift company how can what are you talking about that's like committing harry carry like how could you not give gifts and it's like well all of your best relationships accountants attorneys you know big big money guys guess what their conference tables ready to collapse from all the candy nuts wine bourbon golf stuff it's like 50 things there and so so there's we, noise basically there's gift noise, noise. Yeah. so it, most people don't make gifty a part of their, their overall marketing strategy they just do it off the cuff They're like hey we made money this year let's yeah. send something to 200 people and if you're going to do gifting you have to do it against the grain you got to do it when nobody else is doing it so i won't allow our clients our clients we do clients four times a year mm -hmm. but it's as a surprise and delight so we might do it in february and so we might do it in april but the client has no idea so it's not out of obligation yeah you give gifts at, at the holidays it's expected yeah yeah, yeah you yeah. know you give a gift to your wife only on valentine's day and her birthday and that's it yeah. you know that just keeps you at even and not only expect but also the comparing. They compare. Yeah, but if, if you just show up with flowers on some random Tuesday, I mean, Vaynerchuk's talked about this. When's the best time to buy flowers for your wife? Just because. January, you know, 22nd. Good I, that's a good reminder. Yeah, Thank there you, you go. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, so, so if you put as much strategy, everybody says their business is based on relationships. Yeah. Relationships with clients, referral sources, partners. Mm. And if relationships matter, how do you show gratitude and appreciation? Like, you go back to like the Old Testament, kings yeah. would give other kings you know, a thousand head of cattle. Why? Because that was the value of the relationship. So a lot of what we teach in the book and help our clients do, yeah. we didn't invent it. Right. We just went back to these Old Testament things and these yeah. old you know, biblical wisdom and then put a new spotlight on it today. So it matters because relationships matter. And standing out above the noise, we went, it was 30, 50,000 messages a day with Twitter and Pinterest yeah. and Facebook and you know, text. Yeah. Most people are overwhelmed. Yeah. So a package shows up, and it wasn't just any knife that I sent you. Yeah. It actually wasn't me, it was my guy. Yeah. It was personalized to you. Yeah. There were you know, there were three hundred dollar knives that were handmade in New York. Yeah. They were personalized to your wife. It was all the little things you get for those knives. Sure. All, all I could have got it myself. Yeah. But it was the personalization, it was the handwritten note, it was the packaging, it was the fact that you weren't expecting it. That's what made it land. If I yeah. said, Hey Matt, I'm gonna send you some knives, now all of a sudden you're expecting something. Yeah. And that's how most people do their gifting. They do their gifting at the event. Who cares? Yeah. Every thousand people all get the same gift. That doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. So the timing of the gift is just as important as what you're sending. Interesting. So, I, I'm thinking about the book, The Five Love Languages. I'm sure as a married guy, you, you know that too as I well. I dinner with him a, bun, a month and a half. Really? No, Gary Chapman. Yeah. Okay. No so, the interesting, yeah. 
And one of his love languages is gift giving. Yep. I mean, the other ones are fairly easy, right? Uh, yeah. Words of affirmation, you know, quality time, etc. Physical touch, yeah. Physical touch. But gift giving requires a little bit more thought yeah. behind it. Well, yeah, Navar is low. <laughs> Even in their marriage. Like, like gift card. Here's a gift card. Get what you oh, want. Yeah, honey, that, I mean, people say, well, honey, it's the thought that counts. I'm like, BS, it's the thoughtful thought that counts. Whether it's with your wife or your best client or your thousand employees. And so most people use this, the thought that counts, as a way to be lame, as an excuse. Mm, it's an out. It's an out. Yeah. The five love languages are spot on. Really, you know, gifting is just a form of love. Okay. We all, I don't care if you're a billionaire, mm -hmm. you still want to be loved and respected. Mm. Sometimes even more so because you're up in that ivory tower yeah. and everybody thinks you have everything, you don't need any accolades. Yeah. And oftentimes the people that are at the highest of the rung yeah. are craving that honor and respect. And that's really what we're doing with the gift. It's, it's just a delivery vehicle for yeah. honor and respect. That's a very interesting thing because sometimes we think, well, what am I going to give a millionaire? What, what am I going to somebody already makes seven figures, eight figures, a multi-billionaire? They, they, they can afford to buy anything. They can, they can Google it. They can Amazon it or they have their people get it. Yep. But you're right. It's because at that level, what I've realized is that money doesn't define them anymore. For a lot of them, it's significance that they're making a difference. Yeah. So, so, so what's, what's another reason why people should incorporate gift giving? into their marketing strategy relationship building. Yeah, well I think most almost all marketing now is digital. Mm. You know, it's a digital strategy, it's a Facebook strategy. It's, it's, a it's an e-card. It's an e-card. Yeah. Everything is digital. Yeah. And as human beings, like we still crave the tangible. We, yeah. We're still visual. Yeah. And so well, like, I was still excited when you guys sent me the gift and I had to open something. Yeah. Like a, it's like a present. Like who sent me this? Like it wasn't from Amazon. Yeah, no. I won't I won't send you a gift from Amazon because if it shows up it's like, oh it's just automated. Yeah. Relationships aren't automated. Yeah. You want to deepen you want to get like, we have some clients that get thirty eight referrals from the mm -hmm. Cleveland Indians. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen on you know by automating something on Amazon is it comes from building reciprocity. I mean, Robert Chavini's talked about it. When you pour into somebody, yeah. no strings attached, guess what? In our DNA, we're wired to want to reciprocate back. But it has to be done the right way. If it yeah. feels like a bait and switch, yeah. or it feels like a manipulation, yeah. we can sense that. Yeah. And so when, when, when Brent sent you that gift, all the little details around it, we just, we we're asking for time. We're not asking yeah. for deals or, hey, bring us on the show or anything. Like, we just, he was just doing it as a full artifact. Yeah. And then you responded like, Probably yeah. a lot of the gifting that we do includes somebody's in a circle. That's one of the four principles. My gifting budget personally this year is a half a million dollars. Eighty percent of that is targeted not at guys like you, it's targeted at your wife, your assistant, your kids, and your pets. If I could do a gift and get yeah. your wife to love it, guess yeah. what? Yeah. You're game over. Yeah. If she wants to go to dinner with me, yeah. she's like, hey, when when does John Ruin come to town? I, yeah. I have guys. I've never met their wives before, yeah. and they're like, John, you're the only guy, if I said, hey, I'm going to Vegas with John and Will, and they kick me out the door and say, have a great time. Yeah. Because I've deepened that relationship so much yeah. so. So a lot of the gifting that we do is around that family element. Like, yeah. Why would you give knives? That's, that's weird. That's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you know, a lot of business is done by a bunch of married dudes mm -hmm. that their wives are treated like arm candy versus being treated with respect and being included. And when I can get top of mind awareness with somebody's spouse or their assistant, yeah. they do the selling for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Game over. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you said a couple of key words there. So you said you don't give a gift, you give an artifact. Yeah, I hate the word gift. gift comes with corporate gift, okay. swag, trinket, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Nobody wants that. Gift basket. Gift basket, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, cheap bottle of wine, okay. you know, all that. That's a gift, it has been, it's been valued. Okay. So most people, when you ask them what their gifting budget is, they're like, uh, we got two grand for peanut brittle. You know, and like, how much do you have for business development and marketing? They're like, oh, we got five million bucks for that. And I'm like, imagine if instead of doing, having a pissing match like the rest of your competitors, they yeah. have a bigger conference or a bigger billboard or a yeah. bigger whatever swag bag. Yep. What if you picked your top 1,000 partners and relationships and went all in on an artifact? So, so, so go deep to go, go so you're going deep then. You're, you're picking Most a second. go mediocre with the masses. Okay. I'm going to go deep. I'm mm -hmm. going to, I'm going to do it. Or I'd rather have one rate. Mm -hmm. It's Tim Ferriss concept. Okay. Okay. So I think from Kevin Kelly, the idea of I'd rather have a thousand true fans yeah. than have a million people that know me. Interesting. You have a thousand people that are in your corner. Okay. I mean, they're acting, they're not passively loyal. They're yeah. not just consuming your content. Yeah. But they're going out of their way to refer deals. They're going out of their way to open doors to you. They're going out of their way to bring people and buy your book. 
that's a true fan. That's what you call active loyalty. Gotcha. I don't I don't need passive loyalty. I don't need somebody that just sticks around if my price is low. Yeah. I want somebody that's bought into me 100 percent and I want my clients' clients to be fully bought in. And the way that you do that is with an artifact. Think okay. about if you're you know, if your house is on fire, you're probably grabbing something that's related to your military service or maybe yeah. your dad or pictures or a flag. My hard drive. Your hard drive. Pic pictures All and videos. Pictures. Yeah, you're yeah. grabbing that. If, if the gift that you're giving, the artifact you're giving, isn't something that people would be willing to grab in a fire, then you're probably not doing gifts in the right Ouch. Way. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. so, so what happens you receive a gift and you don't open it, you give it to somebody else. So it's not an effective gift. Then. It's re-gifting and that's the worst. People, <laughs> people are like, oh, my gift got re-gifted. I'm like, then it was a lame gift. And most people do gifting, they'll put their logo on it. It's not a gift if there's a logo on it, unless it's the person's logo that you're giving it to. Notice so it's their logo. Notice there is no giftology logo on no, it. No, no. Why? Do you care about giftology? Hell no. You care about PhD. You care about Sapala. You care about yourself. And so do all of your employees. I mean, they might wear something to work, but yeah. at the end of the day, we're all in it. What's in it for us? Mm -hmm. So when I do a gift, I don't care if it's a, you know, if I'm gonna do a leather bag, it's gonna be the best leather bag on the planet, and I'm gonna put their name on it. Well, it's never gonna have mine on it. And people are like, well, they're gonna forget about it. I won't get any promotional value from it. Well, I'm like, if I give you a Rolex, do I have to put my logo on it for you to remember where it came yeah. from? No. Frick no. You can tell everybody where you got it from. Everybody. So what's, what's interesting is if you do gift in the right way and put the spotlight on them, Mm -hmm. and make it all about the recipient and not about the giver, mm -hmm. they shine the spotlight back on you a thousand percent more. Because they're, they were actually wow. honored and now they're bought into you and they realize you weren't trying to, to cheapen the value of the gift and try to turn them into an advertisement. And so yeah. I won't let my clients, unless you're the Cubs, even the Cubs, I'm like, put the logo as small as possible because if you're dealing with you know, billionaires, yeah. they don't want a logo the size of a freaking basketball on their chest. Yeah. They want it tiny, subtle, on the collar, like super, super classy. Yeah. So when we're doing gifting, yeah. if the logo doesn't add value, I don't allow the clients to put it on there. Yeah, like for example, when we're, cre when we're creating company attire, yep. right? Um, I don't even like having Nike on, on the shirt. Like, like they're, they're giving me like some slash, man, do you like this shirt? Yeah, but Nike's too profound. I don't care about Nike. I'm care about branding us. Yeah. But it's a nice shirt though. But yeah. I just don't like the Nike. Can be subtle, can be like grayed out. Tone on tone. Yeah. So it's interesting that you just pointed you care that about out. Yourself. Yeah. You care about your own. You're, you guys, and they're, you know, guys like, like a Garrett White at Wake Up Warrior, they're building a brand where they're, with the Warrior logo actually adds 10,000% value. Now that's different. If you're okay. Harvard, okay. Of you course. Get, you can get away with it because Harvard, the logo doesn't yeah. add value or take value away or keep it neutral. It adds value in most cases. And so thinking through strategically, like you're giving somebody something tangible yeah. to remind them of the relationship. What's that subtle psychological trigger? Is it, man, this dude's world class, man, this dude cares about me, man, this, if this, this boss really is into me and my family, yeah. or is it this person's trying to cheapen the relationship and turn me into an advertisement? Gotcha. Billions of dollars are wasted every year with swag, thinking that they're doing marketing. Wow. And what they're doing is, is filling goodwill in freaking you know garbage cans filled with stuff. I mean, think about when you come back from a typical conference. Yeah. Where does most of that stuff end up? Yeah, shells or the garbage. Yeah. Yeah. And, and but the person that, filed that away. ordered it yeah. thought that they're they're marketing, they're branding, they're not doing any of that. They're uh. spending money to actually have a negative impression on their most important relationships, and that's not wow. a good that's not a good investment. Wow. You know that that does remind me because you know Patrick has mentioned man if you want to build your YouTube channel, which you're making me rethink the way I give gifts to my YouTube subscribers. I'm telling everybody, if you get to 10,000 subscribers, get to 25,000, get to 50, I'm giving a gift with our logo. You're making me rethink that now. You're making me rethink that, you know what? Let me give you something with your logo on, with your last name on it, and maybe subtly in the back of the shoe somewhere, subtly somewhere in the back, we might have, or just as, as, as a thank you card, yeah. but it's based on their stuff. It's so, all about them. So if, for those of you watching this YouTube channel, uh, give me some thoughts, Miss MDs. What would you prefer? You would you have my logo on it, or would you have your logo on it? I'm going to rethink my strategy because I'm coachable. I want to learn how to give you, who are following a channel that's loyal to our channel, a gift in your name, your company logo, your last name. So, all right. So let, let's talk about uh, uh, giving because you know, oftentimes people say, "Well, holiday season coming up," or, or all these things are coming up. How do I give gifts to somebody 
But what what some of the things? What, 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 what yeah, what's what's the what? What are you saying? What do you? Yeah. So what's interesting they, 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 is, they, is that's where most people want to start. They're like, hey, okay, man, what yeah. do I send? Okay. And they look around and they're like, hey, you know, the Apple's a cool brand. Let's give Apple. Meanwhile, the clients that they're giving Apple to already have four iPads, <laughs> and they've already been you know they test drive a car. You get an you know you get an iPad. Yeah. If something's available at Target or Walmart, mm -hmm. it's probably not cool anymore, and it's probably not going to wow somebody. Okay. So if it's on Amazon, Target, I, so a lot of the things that we do from a what perspective, I want some exclusivity. So like the knives that we send to Cutco, okay. you can't go buy them at even Nordstrom's. So there's difficulty in getting it. There's a specialness, let okay. alone having your name on it, whatever else. So uh, if I'm going to do something, I call them practical luxuries. Okay. I don't do a ton of Rolexes for 50 grand. You know, could we afford it? Maybe. But do I think there's a difference between a trinket and a bride? And most people play at one of those ends of the spectrum. They're okay. given bass boats and trips and whatever else. And so timeshares, uh, huh? Timeshares, yeah, like time yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so, so we're looking at a, an artifact. It's the same cost as a, a dinner out, round of golf, or ball game tickets. So most of the, most of the gifts that we're doing are two hundred fifty dollars to maybe five grand at the most. Okay. So it's thoughtful, it's useful. The other person could afford it, but it's based upon how I'm presenting it. So I would rather give you a hundred dollar custom handmade luggage tag than a three hundred dollar watch. And here's mm. why. You would probably never go spend a hundred dollars on a personalized luggage tag that was handmade just for you and your wife. Yeah. Three hundred dollar watch. I don't know if you're a watch guy or not, but if you are, yeah. you're probably wearing a Breitling or a Rolex. So my three hundred dollars that I thought I was branding and giving you something cool gets regifted and given to Goodwill. So you actually spent more money to have less of an impact. That's why we spend three dollars on our business cards. That's why we spend nine dollars on our letterhead. I try to take a detail that most people think is insignificant, like yeah. the knives. Most yeah. people, what do they spend on knives? They go to Bed Bath and Beyond and buy a whole set for two hundred for, for twenty bucks. I'll spend two hundred dollars on one knife. And so I'd rather, when you're dealing with affluent people, we don't need more stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like we already yeah. have like stuff yeah. coming out of our ears. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Marie Kondo, mm -hmm. like everybody's all about it because the, yeah. in essentialism, the book essentialism, we don't need more things, but we all like one nice thing. So people are like, John, I want to send six gifts to my clients this year. Okay. I'm like, how about we just do one or two and just blow, blow them out of the water and do yeah, something yeah. high quality. So when I'm looking for things like a mug, here's a perfect example. Okay. Like a mug, that's the worst gift on the planet. Like, like, a, like a coffee mug or like a yeah. beer mug? But I, but I spent a thousand dollars on it. And a mug. On a mug. And here's why. Do tell. Yes. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds <laughs> insane. I, I, the, the mug takes four weeks to make, carved into it in somebody's core values, their legacy, their why, their family, you know, who believed in them first. So basically, it's almost like winning the Oscars in a piece. And most people are going to drink what? Coffee or tea every yeah, single right, day. Right. And so I've seen billionaires cry from these artifact mugs. <laughs> So I'd rather spend a thousand dollars on a mug than three thousand dollars on a watch. Because the dude can afford the brightly that's the brightly that he wants. Yeah. Thirteen thousand dollar watch. Right. I'll spend eighty percent less money and I'll give him something that every time he uses it, he's reminded of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Talking about his you know, me to his wife, his mm -hmm. family, like think about where most people gather, they're either gathered maybe on a golf course or a cigar shop like we are, mm -hmm. but your close, close friends, your close, close clients, your close employees, mm -hmm. you're inviting them over to the house, right? You're going to break bread. Yeah. You're going to have a dinner. And so the kitchen, if I can get something into somebody's kitchen, I win. Because they're going to use it every kitchen. single day. Mm. Kitchen. Sounds silly. Like, who cares? I want to I take care of the office. Or I want to take care of the golf course. I'm like, how often are they in the, in yeah. the, on the golf course? Let's say 50 times a year. How often are they in their kitchen? Every day. 365. Yeah. 365. Yeah. So who's going to win? I'm going to spend less money. I'm going to get into the fabric. One of the things that I learned. Um, yeah, the functionality of their daily life. So practical luxury, like a yeah. knife, a mug, but not just any. Most people are like, oh, I got the knife. So they go on Amazon, they order, they order a knife, they don't personalize it, they don't handwrite a note, they don't wrap it, they don't include the spouse, and they're like, John, I, I, I spent 50 grand on knives last year, I didn't get any thank yous. Yeah. And I'm like, did you follow the giftology marketing system? They're like, well, well kinda. I'm like, no, there's no kinda. Like, if you wanna bake bread, you better put yeast and water and, and flour in it, or else it's not bread. And if you want to wow an affluent person, you have to follow the ingredients of what's going to make it an artifact and what's going to make it special. Right. So oftentimes people get hung up on the what, and the what's important. Yep. That's fifty percent of the gift. Gotcha. Is that the complete? The other fifty percent that's the secret sauce. Yeah. I won't send a gift unless it has a handwritten note with it. Period. End of story. Why? It's a gift. And that's what I got from you guys. In order to deepen the relationship and show that it was from one human to another human, mm -hmm. if you just say, "Wow, this is pretty cool," yeah, there has to be a handwritten note. Feels like it was typed out and automated. You're like, oh, cool marketing thing next. Yeah. 
handwritten note comes with it. You'll see your wife's name on it. She sees the handwritten note. Women are way, by the way, women are way better gift givers and are way better at leveraging our system than guys are. Guys yeah. want to cut corners. They're linear. They're like, check the box, check the box. And they don't realize that from an emotional intelligence perspective, at a humanistic level, if you want to even at the psychological, get into somebody's heart, yeah. you have to be super thoughtful. Yeah. And you can't necessarily do the same thing to 100,000 people. And if you are, you better follow all the little principles around it. The time, yeah. you better not do it at a time that's expected. So, so the what's important, the yeah. knives are great, kitchen, like if we do a wine tool, people are like, oh, I love wine. Yeah. I'm like, that's great, you spend $2 on a bottle of wine and then you piss it out 15 minutes later. Sure. I'm going to spend $700 on a wine tool. I'm going to get the guys autographed, carved into it. It's going to be one of 5,000 wine tools that are made ever that year. Ar now, artifact. An artifact. Now, every time they open up a $50 bottle of wine or a $5,000 bottle of wine, guess yeah. what they're thinking about? Yeah, think about you. About yeah, yeah. So that's the difference. Mm. It's not spending more money. Yeah. It's spending it more effectively, and it's putting it as a part of the system so it's not a one-off. Most people do their gift, and they're like, you're good at giving one gift once in one yeah. year. Yeah. When we out when somebody outsources to us, we're able to say, hey, who are your top 20% of your relationships? Or who would you like to be? Yeah. Your dream 100, mm -hmm. your dream 1,000. Let's be strategic yeah. about how we're going after those people. And $700 seems like a lot for one gift, but people pick up, pick up a $700 bar tab and not even think anything of it. And what yeah. do they get from that $700 bar tab? Nothing. A week later, they're for, you know, the guys are on to the next Morton's dinner, the next meeting, sure. the next ball game. Got it. experiences without an artifact oftentimes are forgotten about. So that's really what we're bringing to is a, is a thoughtful marketing system, just leveraging gifts as a vehicle. So I'm, I'm thinking about a few people off the top of my head already. So, for example, at our last convention, we had uh, Jordan Peterson as a guest speaker. Yeah. We had Billy Bean as a guest speaker. Yeah, you guys are ridiculous. I don't know, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if, you, they, if you had dirt on them and you, they would do favors or what, but I mean, dude, like, your budget for speakers alone <laughs> That's great. I mean, is, is insane. But I mean, yeah. but you brought I mean, George Bush, I mean, friend. Yeah, Kevin Hart. Yeah. So if, if I was to send them a thank you gift, yeah. Kevin Hart, Kobe Bryant, President Bush, what, what would be your thought process? How would you process that? Probably already invested a lot of money in them. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what your budget was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was seven figures. Seven yeah, figures. Yeah. Most people will do the speaker fee, the dinner, the event at a Ritz Carlton level, mm -hmm. and then they do the gifting at a Motel 8. <laughs> and, then they, and then they wonder why nobody's saying thank you. They're actually wasting money to have a negative thing. Okay. Back. So, what I would say is figure out what those relationships ongoing are worth to you as a, as a lifetime relationship. 100%. And then figure out, you know, Kevin Hart, The Rock, George Bush. Stuff all the time. Yeah. I would I, I would focus as much as you can on the family, the inner circle, the spouse, the assistant, the handler, the manager, all the people that are oftentimes treated like crap, the gatekeeper, yeah. because you're probably not going to be able to spend enough to get on their radar. Maybe you can, mm -hmm. but I would go all in on doing something that included their family. Yeah. Make sure the handwritten file. I mean, really, the principles apply. People like John, your stuff works in the pro sports world or technology. Does it work in? You know, oil and gas and I'm like does it involve human beings <laughs> like yeah and I'm like then guess what it works yeah, 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 yeah. it works in Africa yeah. it works over yeah. in Saudi Arabia the like, Philippines, the Philippines yeah, Puerto Rico like, yep. if, if it involves human beings so so the same thing you know the higher up the food chain you got to get a little bit more creative yeah. but oftentimes if you're not spending necessarily more money you just have to be more thoughtful in what you're doing and, and maybe include more people there's some people when I'm going to get to the CEO of a company I might get 30 other people at that company yeah. you're like it's like a hundred grand. And I'm like, they're worth, you know, eight figures. So I'm okay with investing, you know, wide and deep within that company if they're important enough. So so with your speakers, I would do the same thing. That artifact mug, you know, we have a twenty five hundred bucks for an artifact jar. Yeah, we get the jar made, it's huge, like the mug. Mm -hmm. But then inside of that, you get 20 people to write a letter to that person saying, hey, this is what your life, your wisdom, your talk, your blog, your books have meant to me. And you put that in. You want to talk about like making an impact and, and, and honoring somebody's legacy. Yeah. It's one thing to say, hey, I love your stuff. It impacted my life. It's another thing to aggregate that into an artifact and then put inside 20 examples of this is how your message, this is how your life huh. has resonated with you. I'm going to talk about bawling, crying, you know, that's where you get billionaires crying, is we all want our life to matter. Yeah. I don't care who you are, and like you said, the higher up the food chain, the more you, you're leaning on significance. But maybe you burnt some bridges, maybe you did some things to, to, to become a Kobe Bryant that you didn't make friends all along the way or whatever yeah. else. And so oftentimes, wanting to be able to give back in a way 
we were like, when I'm dead, my, my life's still gonna matter. And so that's, if you can tie that kind of meaning into the tangible, yeah. game over. I love it, I love it. So let's talk about the thought process and what Giftology does because that's probably where the other 50% is where people will fall short because they're so busy. Yeah. They don't have the time to do the research. They don't have time to, yep. to, 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 to see the cer inner circle of, of a person. Yeah. So how do, you, how, how do you help us? Yeah, so I mean, at, at a core level, people will hire us and say, John, mm -hmm. hey, here's my 10, my 50, my 100, my 1,000, my 10,000 relationships. You know, I got the budget. I, I spent a million dollars on marketing. I had 100 grand on marketing last year, $10 million on marketing. Mm -hmm. We're willing to redirect, and I don't tell them, like, you're not gonna redirect your entire marketing budget. Although we've actually yeah. had clients, global clients that said, you know what, I, I read the book, mm -hmm. I, I, I believed in it, and they redirected their entire marketing budget. That's not my recommendation. But people, if they can give us the data points and develop what we call a loyalty action plan, we walk them through four strategy calls and laying out. Here's your most important people are, here's how frequently you should be touching them, yeah. here's what the budget should be, and lay out that plan. And then most of the time people are like, dang, how am I gonna ship out yeah. 200 packages with yeah, a handwritten yeah. note? And I'm like, I'm glad you asked. That's exactly what our firm does. We handwrite the notes. Our team handwrites right. the notes. We pick the gifts. We engrave the gifts. We wrap the gifts. We're basically an outsourced gifting agency. Yeah. And so not only do we help you with the plan, but the hard part is the heavy lifting. Like, how do I actually do that consistently? Yeah. You know, every month, every quarter, every week. And so we built our whole business. We've owned a company for 19 years doing this. For, hmm. From authors all the way up to Fortune 500 companies. And Inf influencers companies. and all that stuff. Influencers, you name it. Yeah. Got it. Very good. So I mean. I'm thinking about myself right now. Of course, we're, we're a seven-figure, eight-figure business now, but I wasn't always like that. What about when I was coming up? What if, what if I was starting from scratch, like me leaving the military? I'm getting involved in the insurance industry. I want to get my foot in the door. I want to have somebody carve out some time for me. Yeah. How can, how can I be effective having this as an outsource? Because I remember me, I was spending 15000 a month on direct mail, dinner seminars, and renting out restaurants and serving yeah. people free food. And a lot of people are, are, are investing that same old school money of the, the yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Direct mail. Direct mail, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so so I mean we have we have some clients that spend 10, 20 grand a year with us. Oh, you know, okay. so it's so and we have people that spend, you know, seven figures. So mm -hmm. so it's scalable. I mean for us, we love the plan. I got a team of giftologists, so um, people come to us and say, Hey, I want the plan. Uh, I need the plan first. That's where most people they they, they like want to shoot. They want to start sending off gifts. And I'm like, yep. dude. Figure out what, what your marketing budget is. Let's figure out what we're going to redirect. Let's figure out gotcha. who the most important people are. They are already warm market. Yep. Most people they have all these warm market relationships, yep. and they're always hunting out the next whale, and they're neglecting yep. the, the people that are actually loyal to them. Yep. And so only 20% of your budget should be whale hunting. Gotcha. The other 80% should be taking care of the warm market. Because yep. if you turn your warm market into salespeople for you, guess what? They're going to start sending referrals, and you don't have to go hunt as often or yeah. as frequently. Um, so, I mean, we have we have financial advisors, we have guys that are speakers, that are authors, that are doing yeah. half a million dollars in business, and they're like, man, I need help. I'm like, great, we, we're, we're for the little guy. Actually, it's fun to have the Cubs as clients, it's fun to have, you know, go speak to Google in these mm -hmm. crazy places. <laughs> but at, at, at a core level, okay. our sweet spot for clients mm -hmm. are $5 million to $500 million. It's small to mid-sized companies. Mm -hmm. It's the Davids that are going up against the publicly traded Goliaths. Mm -hmm. You're right, right. And so when they- With when the they public invest, money. With the yeah, public yeah, money. Yeah. And so when they invest, hundred thousand dollars they need to compete with somebody that's spending a million and they need to have better impact and so when they come to us I'm like I love that you know I love being David I was David I started yeah. the business when I was 20 years old in college wow. and I started investing five hundred dollars a month instead of buying beer I was like investing in <laughs> gifts and you know for Cutco and these companies we became the largest distributor out of 1.5 million people wow. because we were moving such huge volume because we were playing a different game wow. we were going after the 200 million dollar companies and people were like why can't you just go sell knives to Mrs. Jones down the street? And I'm like, because I'd rather sell Mr. Jones a thousand sets to use as a business tool. Gotcha. Everybody made fun of me. And, and now, like, the book and, yeah. and the media and all that speaks for itself. But early yeah. on, they thought I was crazy. So our outsourced gifting agency, no question, we're for the little guy. Yeah. Um, if somebody's willing to commit and get us the right data, yeah. and they're willing to commit, it doesn't have to be millions of dollars a year, but if they're willing to commit 10 to 20 grand a year, all day long. Can we do a quick case study on you? Yeah. Um, so how did you get your foot in the door to talk to the Chicago Cubs and the Chicago Bears, right? And then, and then what, what are you doing currently? Because I know you're here on, on a business trip. Yeah. What are you doing to currently cultivate that relationship? That relationship. Yeah. yeah, so um, so I eat my own dog food. My, my, like I said, my gifting budget this year is half a million bucks. And so it took me six years, uh, almost seven years, to get the Cubs as clients. I sent them gifts for, for seven, years. For seven years. And they came back to me and said, John, 
Um, Was it the same people? Yeah. Yeah, and, and some other people that, that were in L.A. The mm -hmm. gal from L.A. came into the Cubs. Wow. I've been gifting her as well. And they said, John, we got this project. We're not sure what to do. We're redoing Wrigley Field, this iconic structure. Yeah. And, uh, and we, we want to give you a crack at it. And uh, you're not approved by MLB, but we, we, uh, we ran out of ideas. We need help. And uh, we're ripping out the locker room with falling apart. We're like, do we make a paperweight, a plaque? Do we throw it away? Uh, what do you think? I'm like, you really think your top 500 clients want to plaque or a paperweight? Most people's offices are crowded with crap that's not just collecting dust. And on the spot, I was like, uh, what if you made Bluetooth speakers out of, out of that wood so it has a practical artifact, it has the artifact nature but usefulness, and numbered them 1 through 500? And they said, uh, <laughs> yes, do that. And so I went to the speaker company. I said, hey, this is what we're going to do with this wood. And they're like, the wood's falling apart. We can't do that. And I'm like, but I told the Cubs we could. And, uh, and so I'm like, I'm like, we're going to find a way. So I went in-house to our manufacturing facility. We re-laminated the wood by hand. We routed it out and made 500 Bluetooth speakers. And even the billionaire Ricketts family were like, this is pretty cool. So they came back to us again and said, hey, we got this material, we need help with it. So we've since done multiple, but that, those same people, yeah. my rest of my laurels, no, I, every quarter I'm sending them gifts to make sure that, yeah. I'm, that they're on top of mind, that they're being invested in, because guess what? The Cubs are being called on by a lot of people, and most people are willing to sell to the Cubs at a loss just to have yeah. them as a client. Yeah. When I work with a pro sports team, I make profit, the same profit as I would make off of anybody else. Like I'm not gonna do a loss leader just to get the deal. Yeah. And so we did the same thing with the Indians, gifted them for four years before they became a client. They yeah. were the ones that referred us to 38 other teams in one day. But it took four or five years of gifting to make that happen. The Bears, same thing. I gifted the CFO of Roush Fenway, the CF, uh, and I took care of his assistant. They got recruited away to go to the Miami Dolphins. They, they was, the, the assistant went around the office and showed the knives. The guy in charge of suites said, that's the freaking coolest thing I've ever seen. I know you can do that with Cutco. And they became my first NFL client. They referred me in to speak at an event in New York with a thousand pro sports executives. And it was there where I built a relationship, started the relationship with the Cub, or wow. with the Bears. Gifted him for four years, probably dropped, I don't know, five or $10,000 in gifts. Yeah. And they reached out and said, hey, we need a, we need a kickoff gift for all of our suite owners. Uh, we've been using those stupid knives every single day. We're picking <laughs> the knives, is it? And I'm like, that sounds like a plan. Give me the list. Um, so, so when people say, John, wow. that sounds great. Yeah. Like, it sounds like pie in the sky, like academia world. I'm like, we've been doing this for 19 years for our clients. We've, we've seen, in some cases, a 1,000x return off of a gift. I'm not, I'm not talking 2x. Yeah. I'm not talking 10x. Wow. A 1,000x. Yeah. But you have to commit to the process. It, like, people are like, John, I want to do this for six months. I'm like, yeah. if you're not willing to mentally shift your heart and your mindset for the next three years, yeah. like becoming a giver isn't something that you just do for like three months and then yeah. you go back to being like Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you're gonna be radically generous, yeah. it needs to be a shift. Yeah. And yes, there's a business reason. Like we're not like singing, yeah. you know, holding hands and singing Kumbaya. Like this is a real business decision, yeah. but you need to commit real dollars. You're like, oh, Don, I wanna test it with two people. And I'm like, is that really a test? Is that really like, mm -hmm. you think that's a, mm -hmm. I'm like, you wanna test it with 20 people, you wanna test it with 200 people but you need to not just do it one time. Like this is frequency, this is continuity, this is showing up. I mean, Vaynerchuk's yeah. a great example. Like how often is he adding value and building content? Sure, yeah. All day, every day. Yeah, five, six, seven pieces of content always out a day. A day, and then every two years, he asks you to buy a book. He's, Easy, he's best selling. Giving, 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 yeah. giving. Gifting yeah. is the same way. Jab, 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 hook. Jab, 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 right hook. Yep. And gifting is the same way. You don't give a gift and then ask for a referral. Sure. You give a gift, yep. and then you give another one. Yep. And then three months later, you give another one. And guess what? Inside of us, reciprocity builds up, and that guy's going to come to you and say, dude, you haven't asked for anything. You yeah. keep opening doors. You're referring me business, and you're sending me gifts. Like, dude, how can I help you? Yeah. Like they come back and, and they're curious yeah. and they want to give help, which most people do. They give a gift and try to manipulate the situation. Sure. And they completely ruin yeah. the gift. They get nothing out yeah. of it. And they yeah. wonder why people dark them or ghost them. That's why. And I think that's where most people will separate themselves from the rest of everybody else because it's not a direct response type of uh, activity or, or a relationship building experience. It's something you got to commit to. And if you can be patient about it, and know that you're continuing to plant seeds, cultivate, plant seeds, cultivate. A thousand percent return is right around the corner, but don't give up, yeah. is what you're saying. 
I, I'll take ten, oak, you know, ten uh, acorns that become oak trees. I don't care about the other <laughs> ninety that fell on rocky soil and turned into nothing. Yeah. And, and so, oftentimes, I'm going to invest more money into a giver because it's going to it's going to multiply. It's going to be exponential. Um, but a lot, oftentimes, those people are being hit up a lot. Yeah. So they're going to see it. Like, is this dude for real? Yeah. Or is this a gift to manipulate? Yeah. Is this guy is this guy in it? For, everybody says they're it's sexy to say they're playing the long game. Most people's long game is three months. <laughs> I'm like. I've been doing this for 19 years. A quarter. Yeah, that's it's a quarter. It's not yeah. even a year. That's not even a year. And so, but yeah. that's how most people view gift. You know, like, yeah. oh, I did this. Where's the return? I'm like, sometimes you will get that immediate. Like, yeah. when Brent sends the gift, it was yeah. so amazing. Like, you responded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't hang that over people's head. Yeah. We, like, we go, I wanted like, to give back. You wanted to. Yeah. And most people do when you do it and you're, you don't cut corners. Yeah. And you do it with the right, you know, people can sense yeah. your heart set, your mindset, or you, like... You know, they're going to ask around. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, but I, I tell people all the time, most people have, you know, when you're climbing the ladder, you have a bullseye on your back, people want to see you, like, not succeed, they're trying to pull you down. Yeah. When you're a giver and you're somebody that's constantly giving, like, people are wanting yeah. to succeed because you're probably pulling other people along with 100%. you. I, know that's your, your, I mean, you're mentoring other officers, you're mentoring other people. Like, that has a different feeling to it. Yeah. And gifting to get versus gifting to plant seeds to build, deepen the relationship, knowing yeah. that whether it's that person or the person they're going to pour into that's going to come back because who knows where that person like a great example I mean I was, I was gifting to Cheyenne the, the CEO of uh, the Orlando Magic our first NBA client I gifted her at the same level as, as Alex Martin the CEO for three years didn't ask for anything the only thing I asked for was five minutes when I was going to be flying in to speak in Orlando she, I didn't realize this when I ended up showing up at the office I got five minutes with Alex I thought it was going to be five hours I was pissed um, she took me around into the boardroom there were seven people lined up and those seven people were in charge of suite sponsorships ticketing all that kind of stuff and I didn't know any of them they all walked over and gave me a hug so I was like what the heck is going on this is crazy come to find out Shine had been in their ear for three years talking about giftology and John Rulon our biggest six figure deal came as a direct result not of the CEO Alex although he's a great client and yeah. a great advocate it was the assistant who felt loved on and appreciated not manipulated she sold the deal she closed them. They're like, John, we know we're going to do business with you. If you're good enough for Cheyenne and Alex, you're good enough for us. Just show us what we what we can do. And I'm like, are you, are you seriously to say that? Like yeah. most pro sports teams, just like kiss the ring. You know, yeah. like you have to like grovel to get the business at a loss. Um, and so when you can pour into people yeah. that way, the yep. strings attached, like it, it's and play the, the real long game. Yep. Like magic starts to happen. I love it. Guys, you've been watching this. You got a lot of value from this conversation. I hope that you can provide and give your gift of comments, feedback, questions. Make sure you reach out to John Rulon of Giftology. Is it okay to give a gift? I would. I love to give a gift. Yeah, right. go, 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 go. All right. So, so most people we talked about the what. They're yeah, like, yeah. Hey, I, I want to know what to give. I, the other most common question we get is what not to give. Okay. And so there's, you know, like, what do I, you know, I don't want to step on a landmine. Like, what are the worst things to give? And so gift cards are on that list. Consumables like alcohol are on that list. We put together a white paper. We take all of our clients through. Yeah. Your tribe can download it for free. Yeah. Um, and it's not only the top ten worst gifts, but it's, yeah. it's why. Yeah. They're the worst. Hundred uh, percent. They go to the givers. Edge.com. Oh, we'll put the website right there. Thegiversedge.com. Okay. They can go download the free white paper. And then we also share our top 10 best tips and articles yeah. that we've written over the last 19 years. So they can take it, run with it. Obviously, we love selling giftology books, but go take the free stuff first. Yeah. And then if there's value there, then you come back and, you know, it's on Audible and Amazon and all that kind of stuff. 100%. And by the way, I know I was giving a gift for 10,000 subscribers. But let me double down on my gift giving. Listen, guys, I want you to make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And once we cross 10,000 subs, I want to make sure I not only give you, one of you guys, a random subscribers drop and drop comments and then just methodical in doing that. I want to pick a random uh, commenter subscriber. Not only will I give you the, the, the pair of customized Jordans, I want to make sure it's in your logo with your last name on it. And I want to double down. I want to make sure I give you a gift from John Rulin's company here, Giftology. But we got hit. 10,000 subs. So make sure you share this video. Make sure you share our YouTube channel. Make sure you're a commenter, frequent commenter, because those are the people that stick out to us. Our, our assistants here are highlighting people. Matt, these people constantly commenting, commenting, commenting. They're not only a watcher or viewer, but they're part of our seven figure squad community. So, John, I appreciate you making some time before you see the Chicago Cubs and Bears to come see <laughs> little of me here in Chicago, man. All, all day, man. It's been awesome. <laughs> thanks for having me. 100 percent That being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit notification, hit that bell.
to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. On behalf of John Rulon of Giftology, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.